Hello and welcome to the Supernatural Trek here at Continual. I'm your host, Gail C. Martin. And tonight we're going to talk about characters who have gone too soon. 15 years, but you know, not everybody made it to the home run. So let's talk about some of those characters that we'd have loved to have seen stick around longer than they did. But first, we're going to have all of our panelists introduce themselves. Lorena. Hi, I am Lorena Aker for the Supernatural Fandom. I'm the managing editor of the largest fan site with original content, the Winchester Family Business. For the Twilight Fandom, I am the editor of the book Fan Phenomenon, the Twilight Saga. Very nice. Keith? Hi, uh, I'm Keith R.A. DeCandido. I am a fan of Supernatural going back to the first season, and I have also written in the universe uh, I've written two, uh, two, three novels. I can't count. I'm a writer. I don't know how to count. Um, I've written three novels, uh, three supernatural novels of uh, Nevermore, uh, which took place in New York City, uh, Bone Key, which took place in Key West, Florida, and Heart of the Dragon, which took place in San Francisco in three different time periods involving three generations of uh, Winchesters slash Campbells uh, who hunt. Uh, I also uh, wrote the introduction for In the Hunt, uh, the essay collection that Ben Bella put out a while back. And I provided the text for the John Winchester's journal uh, that um, was, it was a blank journal with some text from John Winchester's journal at the front of it. And I wrote that as well. Plus, you know, fan of the show. Cool. Teresa? Hi, I'm Teresa Glover. I'm the author of the Caitlin Kelly Monster Hunter series with Paul Staff Books. And I've been a late comer to Supernatural, but I think under Gail's direction i have definitely <laughs> blossomed into a fan <laughs> i'm gonna blame her for this one <laughs> how about you lola hey is lola laracy and i am a writer and podcaster and um, i've been watching supernatural since it started because i was all about the cw back when it was the wb and upn and old timey radio and you had to do <laughs> buggies and carriages to get TV shows back and forth. I've been watching since then. And my claim to supernatural fame is I embarrassed the heck out of myself in front of Ruth Connell. <laughs> How about you, Kristen? Uh, my name is Kristen Jackson. I'm a graphic designer and freelance artist. Um, I work a lot right now in the film industry and I've been a fan of Supernatural since the, I guess the very first season, very first episode. Um, and at times I've worked and, and still work with some of the people behind the scenes uh, from Supernatural. So I have been able, I, I was able to get to see the Men of Letters bunker several times in person. And I so wish that the studio had turned that whole set into like a little museum that all of us could go make pilgrimages to every year because that was such a cool place. That show really did a very good job of creating a real space uh, for us to, you know, to, to love on screen and, and for the actors to experience in person. I, I saw a meme that said, you know, I'm homesick for a place that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And yes, yeah, the yeah. bunker. <laughs> So I'm, I'm Gail C. Martin and Morgan Bryce. As Gail, I write epic fantasy, urban fantasy, near future, post-apocalyptic, and more. And as Morgan Bryce, I write urban fantasy, male, male, paranormal, romance. But uh, on either side of it, I write an awful lot of worlds that Sam and Dean could walk into and feel right at home with ghosts and magic and all kinds of things that go bump in the night. And uh, I run the Supernatural TFWNC group, as well as uh, being a co-co-co- programming person here at Continual. And my supernatural sort of claim to fame is I have a chapter in uh, Lynn Zubernis's There'll Be Peace When You Are Done. And I've written uh, a number of essays for the Winchester Family Business Blog. So. Oh, I forgot I've written in Family Don't End With Blood too. You yes. reminded yes. me. <laughs> I forgot about that. I have a chapter in that too. 
We should do uh, seven degrees of bacon here to <laughs> what connections. So gone too soon. Who wants to jump in with a character from any season that you wish could have hung around longer and why? Yeah. I do. I do. Okay, Lola, you, you or me? I'll tell you what, I only got one. I actually brought the super wiki up and looked at every single one of the deceased characters. I was like, even during A, I was like, oh my God. And I realized, first of all, they just really needed just to do the IMDb cast list for the deceased characters because they're almost the same, spoiler. But anyways, um, I found one who I absolutely adored. She was a guest star and God, I wish she'd come back. Do you remember when Jewel State was on the show? from Firefly. Mm -hmm. She played yes. a character. Okay, this is the best part. Her character was named Amy Pond, mm -hmm. which is like mm -hmm. the best, well, one of the best companions from Doctor Who. And I just loved her being on there so much. And it was just so gripping because not only did she die, she was murdered by someone we love. Mm -hmm. and, and she was, was a Kitsune too. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Well, she was what? Mm -hmm. She was a Kitsune as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. she was a, well, she was kind of a threat, but you know, monsters happen. That should be a bump, bumper sticker, monsters happen. <laughs> Dean needs to get over it and stop killing them. They're not all bad. So I would have loved to seen her some more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that was a point of, of growth for Dean somewhat over the years where he finally learned to realize that everything supernatural wasn't evil and mm -hmm. sam had a lot to do with that but yeah there were a lot of heads rolled in the meantime and, so. and it was also a, a, a yet another instant to manufacture conflict between sam and dean because yeah. Yeah. we needed at least three or four of those every season yes <laughs> yes i hate you i'll never yeah. talk to you again you left me in hell you killed my <laughs> girlfriend prepared to die yeah yeah, manufactured conflict, absolutely. Yeah. So Lorena, what were you gonna jump in with? I was gonna say, I did the exact same thing. I went through SuperWiki. Uh, <laughs> do you know that there are, let me see, where is it? 1,059 characters that have been on Supernatural. Wow. I was like, okay, wow. and I went A to Z, but that was just to get my long list. My number one character that was gone too soon Dean Winchester. Aww. I just, you know, that they killed him off so quickly in the um, finale, right after he had lost all his supernatural mojo, I guess, you know, that Chuck wasn't uh, helping him along. He didn't have Castiel, he didn't have Jack. And we don't know what the period of time was between uh, Jack becoming God Chuck being demoted and all the little hunts that they were doing and him finding rebar in a barn. We do. He became a, a ranger in Texas. That's what <laughs> happened. We do well, know what happened. I thought there was an interview that Jared did after everything was over that at least said that in his head canon, they had about five years between defeating Chuck and, and Dean dying, which makes it a little easier for me because at least it wasn't like the next time they went out on a hunt. Right. Um, the episode just, felt like it was the next time they went out on a hunt. Yeah, though. see, yeah. Uh, that's Jared's head cannon, and I love the guy, but I don't agree with him. Not on that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, how can you disagree with the guy that's bringing it to life? Like, okay, you know, you kind of get the last word. But I didn't agree with him. I felt like it was the very next hunt. And it was, it was, I mean, you could look at it and say you could make a case for it being later, and they just, I mean, it doesn't contradict. What happened yes. in the episode if you right. say it was five years later especially since you know the two of them don't actually age as far as we can tell right um, we have no idea they look the same same hairstyle same yeah. flannel yeah but they've had the same hairstyle for 15 years for crying out but the dog <laughs> age, and that's the one that gives me reason to believe jared because there's a shot that wouldn't otherwise have a reason to be there showing miracle really having difficulty getting up the bunker stairs and this was a pretty active dog at the beginning. And I thought, why are they showing that dog having a hard time? That's mean, Jared, pick him up. And then I thought, oh, the dog's older. That's why he can't get up the stairs. And I can't think of any other reason to put that shot in except for the passage of time. 
So that's my headcanon, totally unofficial. But would it have killed mm -hmm. them to put a caption that says five years later? I mean, yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but I mean, I agree that with Keith, they wanted to leave it open-ended because now they can come back and they can fill in hunts for as long as they want and say this was in between the time that Chuck got, you know, demoted and Dean died. But it, it, Dean was number one, my character gone too soon. You're right. I think we all have our fingers crossed that they will come back with the mini series, the movie, the whatever of all those missing hunts. Right. And, and it does leave it ambiguous. So that, I, hope it does, I hope it doesn't turn into Star Wars where I'm like sitting going, oh my God, okay, is this before this happened or after <laughs> this happened? And oh my God, I don't know. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> so who, who else has someone out there for the, the gone too soon? I got one. Yeah. So Ronald from Night Shifter. I wish we could have had more episodes with Ronald being a recurring character that they visit every season at some point to find out more about what this guy has going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would have loved to see more Ronald. Yeah, because he was he was just fun. You know, he was fun. He was a he was a believer. He was a diehard, you know, trying to get the truth out. You know, we I'm sure that there were more people like that in Sam and Dean's world, but we only, you know, really encounter very few. Um, so I really wish that they would have had more people, if not Ronald, then a few more people like Ronald out there. So. I can go for that. Yeah. I, I did not need to look at the super wiki to make my choice. Um, I, I, my choice was made before Gail ever even asked me to be on this panel. <laughs> and when she asked me to be on this panel, I asked to be on it for the specific reason of talking about this character. Um, Special Agent Victor Henriksen. Oh, yep. Um, who I adored from the moment we saw him um, in uh, the episode of the bank robbery that I can't remember the title of now. Um, yeah. With the, well, that was Night Shifter, wasn't it? That was it? Night Shifter, right. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yes. Um, because I, first of all, I loved the idea because everything Henriksen said about them is exactly what somebody who doesn't know about the supernatural would think about what the two of them are doing all the time. Mm -hmm. The Bonnie you know. Deer Clyde, yes. Right, yeah. I mean, you know, got, uh, raised on the road by an ex-Marine who was a little crazy. You know, mm -hmm. um, this, this screams, you know, crazed satanic cultists they, they go around digging up graves all the time you know it 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 all made sense and what i especially liked in, in each of his subsequent appearances and his final appearance bore this out i'm looking at hendrickson and i'm thinking okay this is what dean would have been like if he had a normal life and went into law enforcement mm -hmm. and this was borne out by justin bello when hendrickson finds out about the supernatural and realizes what's going on and he and dean are like work perfectly together mm -hmm. and i thought this was such a great opportunity i mean for starters what I, what I especially loved about the character before Justin Bellow was that he was not incompetent. Each time he was, you know, a lot of times this sort of character is sort of like, you know, like McGee, on, like the, the reporter McGee on the mm -hmm. Hulk, or like um, uh, the, the guy who's chasing the one-armed man in The Fugitive. You know, he has, to, he has to constantly fail in order to keep the show going. Henriksen came closer every single time and he learned mm -hmm. from his mistakes. And, and in Justin Bellow, he got him. The only reason it, it, it he didn't get to keep them was because a demon had taken over his boss but the i he was he was a respectable antagonist you know he was somebody who um whose whose abilities you could respect and he would have been a useful ally to have mm -hmm. which is why i was so pissed when they killed him off at the end of justin bellow which is still despite that one of my favorite episodes of the show just because it was beautifully done um the you know, all of it was just, it was just a really good, you know, siege storyline. Mm -hmm. um, and Henriksen was just so good in that. Um, and, and I was just, I was so disappointed when they killed him off. There was so much more that could have been done with him. I mean, I love law enforcement characters anyway. Um, and I actually have the odd distinction of writing chronologically Henriksen's first appearance. Mm -hmm. Because I put him in, Super, in Nevermore um, at the end, uh, there's a cop uh, a New York City cop who actually knows about the supernatural. She works in missing persons and she occasionally helps out hunters when they come into New York. And after Sam and Dean have left, uh, Henriksen shows up because he heard that they were in New York and she stalls him. But the story actually takes place before he before Night Shifter. 
And I didn't even realize I'd done that. <laughs> it, it was in fact the super wiki that, that pointed it out that it was chronologically his first appearance. Um, so that was cool. I, and I, I freely admit putting him in Nevermore was 100% self-indulgent on my part because mm -hmm. I wanted to write the character because um, <laughs> I thought he was cool. And I, I wish they had done more with him. Keith, I'll have to tell you, um, one of my WFB writers, Nate Winchester, someone that I believe you will remember, he interviewed yes. you. He absolutely agrees with you. He did a fabulous video article on Hendrickson and made a case for him to be uh, one of the good candidates for a um, like a side type of, uh, not necessarily another series, but somebody that could have developed into a lot more than he was. Um, so I recommend that that video like, review article to you. It's, I could send it to you. He, he absolutely the loves Victor as well. Yeah, the existence of Jody proves that the character could have been done because Jody has the role that Henriksen could have had. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and that was honestly one of the things that I was laughing about when I watched the Walker premiere is, hmm, let's see, we have one brother who goes into law enforcement and is passionate about justice. We have one brother who is a very ambitious lawyer. And let's see, we <laughs> where have we seen this before? Yes. Mm -hmm. Teresa, how about you? Oh, you're, you're muted. You're, mu you're muted. Oh no. Still muted. <laughs> We're giving her sign language. I know we are. Language. Oh. Okay, and Keith is the one that's smart enough to send her a message. There we go. <laughs> I went to cough, muted myself, and I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> um, I have a thing for bad guys. So the two that really got me when they left were Bella and Crowley. Bella, because mm -hmm. she was just such a compelling character, mm -hmm. and I was just 100% entranced by her anytime she was on the screen. And Crowley, because he got the shaft of an ending. He just disappeared. Um, and I just enjoyed his snark and the way that he played off of everybody in the show that it just seems like such a huge disservice the way he kind of vanished in the mm -hmm. series. I had I had Bella written down too that she is she was such a good foil for them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that actress, I can't remember her name, but she is just fantastic. Yeah. And Bella's uh, the kind of character we should have been seeing more of because mm -hmm. there's yeah. but there there should have been lots and lots of people. I mean, sure, some people are going to decide to go hunting because for for altruistic reasons or because one of their family members was killed or whatever dumb reason. But most people would be go into it to make money. Absolutely. Because that is the motivating factor for most of humanity. <laughs> and, yeah. and, well, just... and watching her chemistry, especially with Dean's character, was mm -hmm. just, mwah, I loved every minute mm -hmm. of it when the two of them would just go at it. And they didn't even ever have to end up as, as any kind of romantic interest, just as a frenemy. Yes. She, yeah. she was very much a female version of Crowley in that sometimes I'm your friend, sometimes I'm your enemy, guess which it is today. And I would have loved to have seen her stick around just to be a thorn in their side. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, the other one that I miss, although she has had a much longer run in fan fiction than she ever got on the show, is Missouri Mosley. Mm. Yes. yes. She's on my list. I've got another dozen. Um, the side <laughs> on my list. Um, yep. Yeah. Because she was great. You know, they, and I get that there were years when they were trying to isolate the boys and, and make it very much that it was them against the world and, and cut them off from getting good information about the other side. So psychics didn't stick around long, whether it was Pamela or Missouri or whatever. But I would have loved to have seen Missouri um, be more of a presence, even if there were reasons she couldn't warn them about something or, you know, there were all kinds of reasons she couldn't blow the story um, just to have her there as a presence because I loved the actress and I loved the way she played the role and I loved the way she didn't take any crap off of Dean and yelled <laughs> at him in advance for things he had only thought about doing uh, like putting his feet on the coffee table I, you know she just mm -hmm. really had snark 
she made a huge impact in her one episode at the beginning. I mean, yes, she oh, yeah. appeared later just in time to die, you know, mm -hmm. but at the beginning it was a huge impact, but her, the decision to not have her go forward was purely practical. The actress was not available. And they mm -hmm. said they really wanted her and they- Well, and she, the character shows up more I'm sorry, what'd you say? The the character shows up longer in the anime. Mm -hmm. um, she's in several yeah. episodes in the anime, yeah. although, you know, again, this is Midwestern America translated through Japanese anime lens, which kind of makes her look like the crone in Howl's Moving Castle. Um, <laughs> okay, the TV show has Midwestern America look like Vancouver, so, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, I figured there was probably some reason that they couldn't bring her back, but that was my, she was one of my top ones. Two, yeah. two of my others mm -hmm. are um, Ellen Harvell and Rufus. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I was aching for, even if it was just one episode or better yet, an entire spinoff, though the CW would never do it, of Bobby, Rufus, and Ellen just going around, <laughs> you know, Kick, kicking butt while being older than everybody else. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I especially, I, I've always been a fan of, of Stephen Williams uh, going back to, to various roles he's had over the years, including he was in an early episode of MacGyver, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And he was great in the X-Files and, um, and a number of other things. And, he, and I loved his Rufus. And, and I particularly loved that because he... The, the, the conceit is that there aren't very many old hunters because it's a dangerous profession. It's very easy to get killed. And I love the fact that Rufus was just too damned ornery to actually die. Mm -hmm. And then of course he died anyway, but still, um, you know, I, oh, I would have loved more episodes like the one where we got the flashback to him and Bobby working together. The weekend at Bobby episode. At also that episode, one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, why did you send him out in the yard? Cause you got a body in your basement. I got bodies out there too. You know? <laughs> Hunter problems, yes. Yes. I, yeah, and you're right, Keith. You know, it's the wrong demographic for the CW, but I'd love to. Do you remember the, the movie Reds, which was all about the older um, assassins? And I think Helen Mirren was in it. Or, yeah, Bruce uh, Willis, Helen Mirren, John Malkovich, yeah. Morgan yeah. Freeman. Yeah. Okay, staff that with Bobby and Ellen and Rufus. And <laughs> 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 around to kick butt. Yep. Yeah. I think this sort of thing just kind of. Tying, tying it all together, it sounds like we all are liking these characters that kind of widened the world a bit more and showed that there was more people out there that were uh, part of the supernatural community other than just these, you know, the, the men of letters or, you know, the, they introduced the men of letters like this big mythology one. But the Ronalds and the Hendricksons and the Ellens and the, you know, uh, the Bellas, those are all people that are part of a supernatural story, you know, supernatural small s. And, and it was nice to kind of have those people out there to show that the world is kind of a very large space where lots of things are happening outside of what we see in our episode with the Winchesters. And I think, you know, at least I appreciated having that that connection that shows that this is a very large world with lots of things going on and lots of opportunities for stories. And I wish that we could have seen more of those sorts of characters because that kind of meant that there were more of these sort of outside the mythology stories. Um, I would have been glad to switch off some of the angels and demons storylines to get more of those extra people. I wish we could have had Ash for longer. Yes. I mean, oh, I don't. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that conversation between Ash and Sam late at night after a half a bottle of Jack talking about what it was like knowing the Hunter world and being at an Ivy League school and why they weren't anymore. That would have been a really validating conversation for Sam um somebody equally smart who left on his mm -hmm. own I, I you know i just would have loved to have seen that i like the idea of ash i didn't like the execution of ash i i i 
it, it, it didn't work for me. And partly because my ex-wife went to MIT and I, there was nobody like that there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I would have, I would have much rather had it be some, you know, nerdy Asian kid um, who, who basically decided to get into hunting, you know, but that wouldn't have, that wouldn't have fit with the redneck ethos that the show was insisting. Well, that was Kevin. Yeah, speaking it's of nerdy. Kevin. <laughs> well, yes, and then we yeah. had Kevin later, yes. Um, yeah. I think one of the, one of the, I think we, we can't go with, through this hour without mentioning Charlie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because Charlie is pretty much the poster girl for Gone Too Soon to the point where they're created an entire alternate earth for the express purpose of bringing yes. her back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Well, we got we got alternate Kevin there too, who was also right. and alternate Bobby and alternate and Bobby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But, but at least, um, but at least Kevin. In, in the case of both Kevin and Bobby, at the very least, it felt like they had told complete stories. And in Bobby's mm-hmm. case, he was you know he was enough of a major supporting character that you can't really say he didn't get his due on the show, and, and, you know, considering he was only supposed to be a one off character. You know? mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> Charlie, though, was was a really good, strong, impressive supporting character, and her her death was just so damn gratuitous. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, at least I, if they could have just sent, we, we just watched the um, the Oz the first uh, episode, Slumber Party, last night in in the group, and it was like, why couldn't they have just had her go off indefinitely with Dorothy and not kill her off? Just you know, she goes back to get vengeance or something, but. Leave her alive, only somewhere else. It's a big country. There's lots of people they won't encounter again. Yeah, because mm-hmm. yeah. it was different writers that wrote her death than wrote Charlie. That's mm. that's why. I mean, you know, um, and you spoke of Oz. Dorothy was on my list. Dorothy mm-hmm. was only in mm-hmm. one episode, but she was fascinating. <sighs> the way I pick, I had fourteen, um, but you know, twelve other than the main characters that got killed mm-hmm. off. The way I picked my dozen was um, the the characteristic of the interest of that character. What did they do to uh, bring out more in Sam and Dean, or were they a character all by themselves? Like Dorothy was just fascinating, mm-hmm. and what she had done, and she was so snarky with with Sam and Dean. She didn't or she didn't stand up to you know for anything, and with Charlie and. She was strong in and of in and of herself. Same thing with um, Sarah Blake. I love, love, love Sarah Blake, and she was mm-hmm. again one episode made a huge impact, and then came back later just to be killed, which was so mm-hmm. annoying. I couldn't believe they did that. Why didn't they just leave her with her happy family? But no, you know Crowley had to go off after everybody that mm-hmm. they saved. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sarah Blake in Providence. I just thought as was wonderful. Pamela Barnes mm-hmm. was yep. um, because again, she was a strong character. They had a lot of characteristics that were very unique to just her. So she was like developed very quickly with, you know, the blindness went on, but how she could stand up to them and how she could just like Missouri, how she could see into their souls and um, bring out something that was an expose for the audience, but without it sounding like expose. So I, those were the characters that I, that, you know, I just loved and they were just short lived. You know, two of the characters that were villains, but I would love to have seen more of them, just like I would have loved to have seen more of the American Men of Letters and the other chapter houses and the, the other bunker, you know, is Cuthbert Sinclair and his underground hidden lair with all the arcane stuff and occult stuff and and monsters, you know. Uh, he was he was in a video uh, in in Last Holiday as a kind of a background and then he only got that one episode and I just thought there was some fascinating story there. And the other guy whose name I don't recall but he was in the episode where they put him on a roller chair and rolled him down the Temple of Doom kind of hallway as things shot at him. Uh, oh, um, it was a later season. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were tra- demon trying to get, demon Bart was trying to get his bones back. Those two guys, you know that there had to be more like them who were out there grabbing up all these occult things for bad reasons and 
um, he reminded me of the collector character in um, Simon R. Green's mm -hmm. The Night Side series. Mm -hmm. And I just, as a, a recurring bad guy, it would have been interesting to just keep running across those guys um, because they'd have been out like Bella trying to get ahead of them. Mm -hmm. there and were, the ghost there were... facers. The ghost yes. facers. What oh, were they yes. getting up to? What, what trouble were they <laughs> <laughs> getting in trouble again? It would so, have been fun to see them do something that actually became more serious. I know that, you know, they had that conflict with Sam and Dean later, but I wanted to kind of see them almost become their own hunters in their own right, even if it's mm -hmm. just for ghosts and, you know, becoming more real, more than just the farce that they started off to be. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to take over no, that no, conversation. Sort of, you know, <laughs> sort of like practice, practice makes perfect that they right. had been doing it long enough. They were like, you know, we really need to, to get serious about this and, 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 and take it more like Sam and Dean and, and yeah. Well, and yeah, the, whole, I you know, that. the first episode where they were shooting in, in um, his garage and then his dad opens the door and it ruins the shot. We thought that was funny until we all spent a year on Zoom from our bedrooms. <laughs> ah, <laughs> For real. And now I really kind of feel these guys. Yeah. You know, the ghost characters <laughs> are really favorite characters of my co-editor, Alice. She absolutely loves their, their episodes. But I have to be honest, I, couldn't, I wouldn't mind if I never saw those episodes again. <laughs> I could not see my favorites either, stuff. but... I yeah. really, I was just like, oh my God, leave me alone. <laughs> they made me nuts. The one that I really would have liked to have seen her get more of a redemption was Claire. I mean, mm -hmm. I know she kind of worked through her issues some, but I just wanted to see her, you know, be her own kick-ass person in and of herself rather than just getting off, off screen by, you know, vampires. It just mm -hmm. didn't seem like a fair ending for her. She had, she struggled so much to get where she got. Like it, it felt like she needed to get that triumph, that acknowledgement, that sense of self before they killed her off. I wanted to see her mature past just being the Angry. stereotypical Angry teenage <laughs> yeah. girl. Yeah. Um, because she was written in some episodes like the one where she tried to get Dean killed so unlikable it was hard to be sympathetic and yet she certainly could have been redeemed can you imagine her and Joe going off and kicking <laughs> ass and taking names right right because yeah. Joe again didn't buy her as a, a love interest but like the episode where she went after H.H. H. Holmes I could see her doing that and being good at it mm -hmm. Ellen and you Joe almost... were both characters that really they completely screwed up um they they that they, they should have the the roadhouse should have been a really useful place for them to go to and said they burned it down and even after that ellen and joe were 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 more useful allies and could have and should have remained that you know and mm -hmm. and their deaths while heroic were were so they felt so constructed mm -hmm. you know like like the whole episode was written for the express purpose of killing them off um in in a way that that wasn't nearly as organic i mean uh, several of these characters at least some in some cases the deaths at least worked from a story perspective um ellen and joe's i didn't think did um mm -hmm. I, the same reason why charlie's didn't it just it felt too much like you, you could see the strings you know a grand <laughs> gesture yeah mm -hmm. yeah well, I did feel, I mean, I watched that episode with my mom. And so the two of us were like tissues and we were crying. <laughs> that was, that was, uh, you know, to watch a mother daughter watching that was, they, you know, at least for, mm -hmm. for the emotional impact, I, you know, I really, I felt that episode very strongly. Um, mm -hmm. One person I'd like to bring up just because I like the actor um, and would have liked to have him play the character more rather than the, the other way around, where the character is somebody that I'm interested in right from the start, was um, Corin Nemec with his, with his Christian Campbell. You know, the Campbells were kind of, you know, that was a, a storyline which probably could have had some, some interesting tales told. And I really would have liked to see him, you know, not die 
and and continue on uh, a ways more to you know be part of that larger background for supernatural so i wish i could have seen more of him than than you know than we got um, that that the whole Campbell family thing was a case where I think it, not so much that they were gone too soon as that, that I was actually okay with them being gone, but I wish they'd been done right in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, I was in the beginning is one of my absolute favorite episodes of supernatural. It's what inspired my third novel. Um, when we mm -hmm. found out that, that Sam and Dean's grandparents and mother were also hunters. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got to write the Campbell family and one third of them in 1969 facing off against this, this monster. And I was so, when they said they were bringing Mitch Pileggi back as as the grandfather. I was thrilled, partly because I love Mitch Pileggi. I've loved him in everything he's been in, um, and and he's on Walker and he's on Walker mm -hmm. now too. Mm -hmm. um, Playing and, pretty much the same character. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yes. but, um, um, and they just so totally botched it. That was such a great opportunity, um, and they completely blew it. And, and it got to the point where when they did kill him off, I didn't really feel that bad about it. But what I did feel bad about was the, was the whole thing was just a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and he was so good in, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll give you one that's way out of left field. Samandrio. Mm -hmm. Elf, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, that little guy, Tyler Johnson, I just thought was fabulous. I wanted to see so much more. He had so much faith in Castiel and he was really the good angel that could have been, you know, a mentor, a mentee for Castiel. He could have been the future of heaven. He could have been, I don't know, an inside man. He could have been a lot of things. And when Castiel was forced to kill him by Naomi, Oh, I was furious. Oh, mm -hmm. I was like, no, not the little guy. I really, really liked him. Another one that was in two episodes and, you know, one episode and then one just to kill him off. Mm -hmm. kind of, that's mm -hmm. a theme for me. It seems like if <laughs> when they bring him to kill him off, I get mad. There, there were two, two of, the, uh, of the antagonistic angel characters I wish we'd have seen more of simply because I'm fun, a fan of the actors uh, would be Uriel and Naomi because um, mm -hmm. Robert Wisdom and, Amanda, and uh, Amanda Tapping are both just fabulous. And I was really glad they brought Naomi back in particular because I always thought her death was kind of lame. Mm -hmm. um, I just, especially because you know, especially it happened off camera, I just didn't buy that she would be taken out that easily. Um, mm -hmm. And she wasn't, so. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the one thing that bugged yeah, I... no end on Naomi, I'm sorry, Gail, was oh, um, her, her wardrobe drove <laughs> nuts. <laughs> Nuts. I'm like, what is she wearing? It, it was is, all too sanitized. It doesn't fit. It's bland color. Okay, maybe that's in character, but it doesn't fit. It, it made me nuts. I was like, okay, it's too so distracting. You have a fabulous actress with a tremendous history, bringing a whole fan base, a very well-developed character, major impact on the storyline. And you put her in this, I don't know, you know, secondhand store thing. I was like, oh. But like she was a talk show host. Yeah. She should come out and be like, okay, audience. It's a bit the, the worst, no, the, the, the one who gets the worst costume, I think, was the five minute uh, death. What was her name? Betty at the end where Lucifer killed the Reaper. That made her death. She could read the, oh, the oh, book. Yes, and yes, yes. He yes. killed her again. That yes. What was that skirt? skirt? That pleated <laughs> skirt. Yes, it was yes. awful. Remember the skirt, okay, Gail? We've just come up with a new panel. The worst <laughs> costume choices in the show. You know, because two or three of them are already at the top of my head. Of you know what? Oh my god! Was, well, I'm, let's be yeah. fair. Nobody watches this show for the costuming. <laughs> this it is, depends this on is which show... character you're looking at. <laughs> well, granted, but still, this is this is a show where the most distinctive visual look is one they stole from John Constantine. The this is a show where the, you have the Archangel Michael and Lucifer confronting each other, and it's two white guys in flannel shirts for crying out loud. You know, I mean. <laughs> 
I'll bring up uh, the one of uh, since we're on the topic of of you know the the more the supernatural characters, then I'll jump in with Jesse because uh -huh. I still I I know he's out there somewhere. He'll he'll turn up at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, and along with Jesse, and you know, you get into problems when you have superpowered characters, and this is why Castiel had to, you know, be constantly, he's on, he's off, he's on, he's off, because mm -hmm. it, it, otherwise you can fix out the problems and there's no drama. So I get that they had to do something with Jesse or they wouldn't have had any drama. But I, yeah, I would have loved to have seen him come back just like I would have loved to have seen Mrs. Butters come back I was expecting yes. that she would be part of showdown with Chuck kind of like I, I was expecting a, a Dobby from Harry Potter going you shall not hurt Harry Potter uh only you know <laughs> with her little 1940s hat um and and she kicked Chuck's ass and she didn't get to come back and I was sad about that yeah I, I wonder if they, if the season had been allowed to, to play out as it was originally intended to, if she would have been a part of it, because she was, she did seem to be introduced with that greater power that would have been very much an asset in the final fight. So I wonder yeah. if, if that, you know, the, the way the season actually had to play out, if maybe some parts of the story had gotten rewritten and she might have been one of those parts it'd be there, there, to know. Was, there are several elements of the 15th mm -hmm. season where they were they they planted guns on the wall and then did not fire them in the end and i think mm -hmm. a lot of it had to do with actor availability and, and just the limits on how many people they could actually have on set at once mm -hmm. well and see i blamed i blamed the whole pandemic restrictions yeah. for that plea to start because i figured they just couldn't get into wardrobe that day because of distance <laughs> It was the only piece of clothing they could find in her size. We're going to get a meme of that pleated skirt. Oh. That poor actress, she gets five minutes at the end, and we're all like, ah! Now, uh, now, now another one that would have, um, and I was glad she at least got to come back for one episode, but I was fascinated to, I, I always wondered what she was doing in between was Lily, Lily Sunder. Hmm. They and gave she her did. a very good send off at the end. That yeah. was, she came back once to die, but it was worthwhile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My my intriguing. favorite my favorite one that we did get to see, I guess, enough of, but I don't think she didn't get enough, in my opinion, was Billy. Billy was just <laughs> one of my favorite characters and i just loved everything that she did and i wanted her on every episode possible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well because i would have she loved was just so dynamic and her, she had such a huge mm -hmm. personality and just the way that she took absolutely no crap from especially dean mm -hmm. was just fantastic mm -hmm. yeah lisa berry owned that part mm -hmm. yes just came in as a reaper and they saw her on film and went okay we're rewriting everything to include her she's fabulous yeah well she, she told fantastic. the story at, i think it was spndc not last year but the year before that she had been applying to be something on supernatural for like eight years i don't care what i am i'll be a bit part and she got turned down and turned down and turned down and then she finally got billy and wow mm -hmm. yeah that was that was good casting yeah. I'll give you two sets of hunters that mm -hmm. I met. They're the Baines twins. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought they were very original in yes. how they were written and they had each other. I would have loved to have seen them carried through a long time, you know, but they were in one episode and brought back again to get killed. You know, that was like great, wonderful. I wanted to uh, know what worked for them after he did that spell with Pasha. Yes, I know. Dangling thread. Yeah, definitely a plot line we didn't hear get to hear about. Mm -hmm. um, the other one was Aaron Bass and his Gollum. Yes, I would mm -hmm. like to have followed up on that that storyline. Now they did a little bit. They did it. They did give him a little, you know, snippet um, that said he was off wherever he was to, tracking down the Thule. Uh, so they did give him a little bit, but that was a great mm -hmm. combo too. Uh, and I liked that expansion of the universe, as, as Kristen said. 
The other ones, the other two couples that I would have loved to have seen come back. One was that couple from the real ghost chasers at the um, supernatural convention, the guys who fix copiers who dressed up as Sam and Dean. Demian, I'd have loved Demian and Barnes. If, yes, I'd have loved if they, if Sam and Dean had run into them and they actually had quit their jobs and kind of done a, it's a terrible life sort of thing and gone into it. <laughs> and then the other couple were retiring hunters in the chitters, Caesar and I can't think of his, but they, they wanted to kill the monster that killed the guy's brother. And then they were retiring. And so Dean didn't want to drag them back into what they were dealing with because let's let somebody get out of the life. I just would have loved to have seen them, you know, running a resort in Florida for hunters where, you know, there are no questions asked. In the Florida Keys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Bone Keys. Yeah, yeah, there, there you go. Full circle. Well, that, that was how they originally introduced Rufus. Remember, Rufus originally was retired. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, that was how he was, as, as somebody Bobby knew who was out of the game, uh, but they needed, as a, they needed him to get something, I forget exactly. And then later he wound up being dragged back into it because of the, the whole angel demon war nonsense. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, actually, there's one character who in a sense, at least at the time it happened, I thought it was a mistake losing him, John Winchester. Yeah. He formed so uh -huh. much of the texture of the first season and, and the first part of season two. Um, his, even when he wasn't there, his presence and his absence both were such an important part of the show and, and, the, impact he, and the impact he had on them continued after he was gone. Mm -hmm. But there was something about his presence that was really, and, 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 and in particular watching you know, the, 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 the antagonistic relationship that he and Sam had and, and how Dean finally worked his way toward realizing that no, dad was not perfect. And I would have liked to have seen that continue to develop, to watch them develop as hunters and, and, and in a way surpass him. Because frankly, John was a crappy hunter. He really was. And, um, I mean, there's so much, and, and he was a crappy teacher to them because there's so much stuff he didn't tell them. Mm -hmm. um, which, which I, I always interpreted, and I, and I put this in, in the novels I did, as the conflict in him between him not wanting his kids to turn out the way he did, to at least give them a chance at having a normal life once they found Azazel, um, and his desire to have them, you know, continue the fight. And, and that conflict is why he was always parsimonious with actual useful information to them. Because there's so much stuff they didn't know that they should have. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that would have been more interesting to pursue with John actually there. Um, that I mean, that's actor availability. Jeffrey Dean Morgan has, you know, a career. So <laughs> well, that also would have been cool to see more of Henry Winchester, even if we got him in flashbacks. Mm. Yeah. To yeah. Uh, flashbacks as the Men of Letters, flashbacks as John's father. Just better understand that, because um, I thought that we got to see Henry once and he died, um, but there could have been so much more. Well, Although folks, that 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 one appearance explained so much about John's character, yes, it did. You know, yeah. Um, well, and that was one of the things that that I did think. You know, kind of bringing this full circle to what you were talking about, Dean uh, leaving. Dean's biggest success was that you know John thought he was abandoned by his father. The boys thought they were abandoned by their father. Dean never abandoned Sam, and that enabled Sam to be a good father to Dean Jr. And so Dean broke that cycle. And I, I think that's such a powerful thing that was really written in by intent or by accident that um, has ended up meaning an awful lot to a lot of people. So that's, that's kind of a cool thing there too. Folks, believe it or not, we are already through the, the hour, I think. Nonsense, we only started five minutes ago. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh, I got so more names. Oh, part two. Okay, <laughs> definitely part two. Well, folks, thank you so much for being here. Let's go around one more time, let people know where they can find you online. And uh, Krista, I'm going to go backwards this time. Okay. Um, you can find me mostly on Twitter. Uh, I'm at A N I C A T, Annie Cat. And I do have a couple of my own little fan fiction um, <laughs> works, uh, mostly Castiel centric. So you could find me on the fanfiction.net at any cat with a six, eight at the end. Very cool. Teresa. I'm on Twitter as 
at Scorpio1678. I'm on Facebook as Teresa Glover, and you can find my books at falstaffbooks.com. If you like Dean's sarcasm, you'd probably like Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Lola? Um, I'm a lot of places. I'll say, ooh, I got dogs. <laughs> 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 Hold on. Um, at Lola Laracy and on Amazon, Lola Laracy. <laughs> Hey, Keith, how about you? Uh, you can find me at decandido.net, which is a spectacularly primitive website that I hope to update finally this year. <laughs> um, I know I keep saying that, but it, 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 it's going to happen. I'm sure of it, right when Godot shows up. <laughs> um, and it has links to all my uh, various places where you can cyberstalk me online on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, my Wikipedia page, uh, my articles for tour.com on popular culture. Uh, and ordering links for my most recent books. If you're a fan of Supernatural, you'll probably like uh, the Brom Gold Adventures. Uh, the first book is A Furnace Sealed, which came out in 2019. And I am right now, this minute, well, I'm doing this panel, but right after this panel, I'm going to be working back to working on the sequel, uh, which is called Feet of Clay. Um, and I've got a whole bunch of other books and things and stuff. You can find, if you, I mean, go to your online book dealer of choice and look up my name and you'll find a ton of stuff. Cool. Lorena? For the Winchester Family Business, we are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as at WinFamBusiness, and I'm the one that's behind all those accounts, so you're always talking to me. Uh, for myself, uh, on Facebook, I have a page for my book, which is Fan Phenomenon Twilight. It's also on Amazon or any of your favorite booksellers. And then I personally have an account on Twitter and Facebook, which is at LSAngel2. And I'm real easy to find at uh, Gail Z. Martin or at Morgan Bryce Book. Um, put a .com on the end of both those names and you've got my website. I'm on Facebook um, pretty much more than anywhere else. And um, as I said, my books, my urban fantasy books all cross over. The Gale stuff is all action, no romance. The Morgan Bryce stuff, 50-50. Uh, but there are worlds that Sam and Dean could walk into and feel real comfortable. Pass the salt, grab the shotgun. Here's the holy water. Folks, thank you so much for being with us tonight. And thanks to all of you for watching. There'll be a lot more Supernatural coming up here on Continual. See you online. <laughs>